Hey everybody. Today I want to talk a little bit more about pH in our fish tanks. I have always been a little bit confused about pH and all the chemistry behind it and how it all works. And I'm going to start by talking a little bit about my water softening system because I shot a video the other day talking about how sodium in my water from my water system buffers the pH in my aquarium and somebody pointed out that this should not be the case because sodium has a positive ionic charge and therefore it shouldn't interact with the positively charged hydrogen which is where you get your pH count from. So I thought the same thing when I first started uh, shooting video about well we're coming up on my sixth anniversary here pretty soon uh, but six years ago when I first started shooting video for YouTube here, I was going to shoot a video all about pH. I had just finished learning about how my water softener worked and I thought that gave me a pretty good understanding of how pH worked. So the way my water softener works is I have an ion exchange resin in there, uh, much like Purigen or something else that you would put in one of your aquarium. This is an ion exchange resin and the way it works is it has a negative charge so it holds positively charged ions and in my case in my water system it holds on to sodium ions but those sodium ions have a very weak bond so as the water passes through if there's any calcium or magnesium ions in the water they have a much stronger bond to the uh, ion exchange resin so what they do is they bond to the resin and they knock a few of the sodium ions off and that's the exchange. You're taking calcium and magnesium out of the water and you're exchanging it for the sodium ions. And so the sodium ions and the calcium and magnesium all have positive charges. It's just that the calcium and the magnesium have a stronger bond to the resin and therefore they knock off the sodium ions and that's why I end up with sodium in my water and no calcium or magnesium. And when it comes to backwashing the system, the way you recharge it is by flushing it with basically saline water, or not saline, uh, brine solution. It's basically to the saturation point of sodium. And when you run that high a concentration of sodium water through the, the resin, it actually pulls all that magnesium and calcium off of the resin and flushes it out with all that brine solution. And of course, there's so much sodium ions in the water that the resin is now left recharged full of sodium ions ready to have you know, the whole process start over again. So I learned all that and that all makes sense, but my system is not necessarily a softener. It's actually a neutralizer. I have acidic water that comes out of the ground. It goes through my neutralizer, which is basically a hardener, it actually adds calcium and magnesium to the water, which brings the pH up to where I want it. And then it goes through the softener, which then removes all that calcium and magnesium and exchanges it for the sodium. And what I was told by my water softener guy, the, the guy who owns the company and how these systems work is the sodium is what maintains my pH. We take acidic water, we bring it up, we make it neutral, and then we pull all the stuff out that made it neutral, and we sort of lock it in place by putting sodium there instead. And the sodium is what buffers my water. And so again, when I shot this video the other day, that's the way I explained it. And I have somebody telling me that the uh, sodium should not interact with the hydrogen. But I don't understand why it does. When I was going to shoot my video before, I figured all that made sense. And of course, I assumed that the hydrogen ion would be a negatively charged ion. You've got your positive calcium or you've got your positive sodium. It's going to interact with your negative hydrogen. But when I double checked, you know, I don't want to go shooting a video where I don't really double check to make sure I know what I'm talking about. I found that the hydrogen ion is also positively charged. They're all positively charged. And so how they interact and why calcium or magnesium or sodium will buffer your pH. And there's actually a lot of different stuff out there that will buffer your pH, but it's all positive ions. It's all positively charged stuff. And I don't 
understand the chemistry behind that. Um, I've had no experience in chemistry whatsoever, so anything I start with, I'm basically lost almost immediately when it comes to biology or anatomy, physiology, um, you know, the, the, the living part of our fish and our fish tanks. I've got some background in that, so I can follow along when I'm reading fairly complicated stuff. When it comes to chemistry, I got nothing. I have no background at all. So again, I very quickly get out of my depth when we start talking about anything involving the water chemistry. And I long ago gave up trying to figure out how pH works and why you can have some tanks that have plenty of carbonate hardness but have a low pH. And then you have other tanks that have a high pH but it's fairly soft water. I've had some of my tanks measure a pH of over eight before but zero degrees hardness. I don't know why. I have no idea why the pH would go up to eight in a tank that has no hardness and no carbonate hardness. I would think it would crash maybe. You know, I could see it falling down to 5.5 or something, but why it would go up to eight and stay there? It was my old gudgeon tank for my longer term viewers that remember my old gudgeon tank. The pH in that tank was always high. And it was no different than any of my other tanks. I had nothing in it that should have raised the pH, yet the pH in that tank was always higher than all my other tanks no idea why i've never been able to figure out what makes ph do the things it does other than knowing some of the basics you know if you add calcium or if you add you know aragonite uh, gravel or you add calcium um, type gravel to your tank you're going to raise your ph you're going to stabilize it i understand all that that makes sense but when you start getting into the chemistry behind it of why that's happening or everything that's where i just get completely lost so all i know is that sodium is a pH buffer. And if you actually look it up, you'll find sodium phosphate comes up all the time. If you're looking up pH buffers, it's used in industrial uses apparently a lot. So again, I don't know how the sodium versus the phosphate and the sodium phosphate and all that kind of stuff works together, but sodium clearly buffers pH. My water softener guy told me that years ago. And when you go online, you can find uh, various sodium compounds that are also used as pH buffers. And it was interesting when I looked, the, the various buffers they would list would always give a window of where it buffered to. And sodium, or at least the sodium phosphate, buffered, if I remember correctly, it always lined up with where my tanks usually sit, which made, you know, it's one of those kind of little aha moments. Um, but it was something like 6.7 to 7.3 or something like that was where that window of where the sodium phosphate tended to want to buffer to. And so that kind of lines up with me having sodium in my tanks and my tanks usually sit somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5. I'm usually right around that neutral, give or take. Um, which is where it's supposed to be. That's where I've got my water set to and that's where it stays. And that was the whole point of my other video is that my water is just remarkably stable. I've got no hardness, uh, I've got no general hardness and I've got no carbonate hardness. Um, temporary and permanent hardness are slightly different things. We're not gonna get into that. But as far as what affects your pH, the, the carbonate hardness and the, 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 the calcium and the magnesium, I don't have any of that. And yet I've got really, really stable pH. So. That's all I really care about. As long as my pH is stable, um, that's all I worry about. So, you know, take that for what you want. Again, just a kind of a conversation discussion about it. I'm not going to pretend I understand uh, how pH works and all the different things that make it go up and down and why it does. And I'm absolutely baffled by why positively charged ions, calcium, magnesium, sodium, etc., affect positively charged hydrogen ions that, that that makes no sense to me i always assumed hydrogen would be a negatively charged ion and that's why it made sense but it's not it's all they're all positive so again i have no idea anyway that's my two cents for today i hope you enjoyed love to hear your thoughts and comments about that again just kind of a conversation starter rather than a you know parting any wisdom on anybody necessarily but i'd love to hear your thoughts about it and if you can explain it to me i would love for you to do that too i'll do my best to follow along but like i said i don't have any um history with chemistry or anything like that so you're gonna have to use little words and start you know with the basics to get me there if you want me to understand uh how all that works so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed don't forget this one here is my 125 gallon new world tank hope you enjoyed that one i'll see you real soon in the next one